Your master cylinder is the heart of your vehicle's braking system. When you press your brake pedal, it distributes brake fluid through hydraulic lines to four wheels of your car. Anytime a hydraulic braking component is replaced, air will enter the system that can cause a spongy pedal and reduce braking performance. To prevent this reduction in braking, the process of bleeding the brake system must be performed. In this video, we'll discuss the methods for bleeding the brake system as well as bench bleeding the master cylinder. Since we'll be working under the hood, it's important to observe basic safety precautions. Set the parking brake and be sure automatic transmissions are in park and manual transmissions are in neutral. To avoid burns, allow your vehicle to cool before doing any type of repair. Don't wear loose clothing or jewelry that could get caught in moving parts or might bridge electrical connections. And finally, always wear proper eye protection. Before you begin work, be sure the vehicle is parked in a level area and that the wheels are chocked to prevent any unintentional movement. When bleeding the brake system, it's important that you use the correct brake fluid. Always refer to your owner's manual for the type of brake fluid that should be used in your vehicle. Dot 3 and Dot 4 are the most commonly used types of brake fluid. Dot 5 and Dot 5.1 are silicone-based fluids which should be used only to fill non-ABS systems that have never been previously filled with glycol-based Dot 3 and Dot 4 fluid. Typically, Dot 5 and Dot 5.1 fluids aren't recommended for normal automotive use. Once again, always check the owner's manual to see which fluid the manufacturer recommends for your vehicle. There are four methods for bleeding the brake system. They are manual, pressure, vacuum, and gravity. Regardless of the type of bleeding that is performed, make sure to keep the master cylinder full of brake fluid during the entire process and work from the farthest wheel from the master cylinder first to the closest last. When bleeding a wheel that has disc brakes, attach a clear tube to the bleeder screw on the brake caliper. For drum brakes, attach the clear tube to the bleeder screw on the wheel cylinder and then place the other end of the hose into a container. First, we'll discuss the manual method. Manual bleeding requires an assistant inside the vehicle to apply and release the brakes. Have your assistant pump the brake pedal a few times and then hold firm pressure. With pressure being applied to the brakes by your assistant, open the bleeder screw. As brake fluid flows through the clear tube, the pedal will begin to fall towards the floor. Close the bleeder valve before the pedal reaches the floor and tell your assistant to release the pedal. Repeat this procedure until a clean, steady stream of brake fluid with no air bubbles is observed. Repeat this process for the remaining bleeder screws, remembering to keep a close eye on the brake fluid level in the master cylinder. Next, let's talk about vacuum bleeding. Vacuum bleeding is accomplished using a vacuum pump that you can purchase at your local AutoZone. Attach the pump to the bleeder screw with a clear hose. Open the bleeder screw and start applying vacuum with the pump. Once you see a steady stream of clean brake fluid, close the bleeder screw and repeat this process for the remaining bleeder screws, remembering to keep a close eye on the brake fluid level in the master cylinder. The gravity method is the most basic method of brake bleeding and can be done by one person. As the master cylinder is at the highest point in the car, all bleeder screws can be opened at the same time and gravity will pull the fluid slowly through the system. When brake fluid is flowing out of the bleeder screw, free of bubbles, close the bleeder screw. Begin this process working with the bleeder screw farthest from the master cylinder first and continue to work to the bleeder screw closest, closing that one last, keeping an eye on the brake fluid level in the master cylinder. The pressure bleeding method requires special equipment that the typical do-it-yourselfer doesn't have available. It's a simple process that doesn't require an assistant, but instead uses a specialized tank commonly referred to as a bleeder ball. The bleeder ball feeds brake fluid to the master cylinder under pressure, keeping it full during the bleeding process. While brake fluid is pushed through the system at 10 to 15 PSI, bleeder screws are opened one at a time so that air can be forced out of the system. When fluid coming out of the open bleeder screw is clean and free of bubbles, the bleeder is closed and the process is repeated for the remaining bleeder screws. Now we'll discuss bleeding the master cylinder off the vehicle, commonly called bench bleeding. Many master cylinders are required to be bench bled to avoid air being introduced into the braking system, which can reduce braking performance. 
When you're bench bleeding a master cylinder, it's best to securely fasten the master cylinder in a vise parallel to the floor. If you're purchasing a master cylinder, you'll find that most come with a bleeding kit, but if you're removing and reinstalling a master cylinder, you'll need to have barb fittings and clear tubing to complete this job. First, screw the barb fittings into the ports on the side of the master cylinder. Then, insert a clear rubber tube onto each of the fittings and place the other end into the master cylinder reservoir, making sure the hoses are held securely in place so that they don't slip out. If the master cylinder has a proportioning valve attached and you are replacing the master cylinder, the proportioning valve must be transferred to the new master cylinder prior to bench bleeding. For proportioning valve equipped master cylinders, install the barb fittings and hosing to the upper ports of the master cylinder and plug the lower ports of the proportioning valve. Once the barb fittings and hosing are in place and the reservoir is full of fresh brake fluid, use either a wooden dowel, a blunt metal rod, or a large Phillips screwdriver to compress the master cylinder plunger with slow, deep strokes until there are no bubbles coming through the clear tubing. Take note that in some master cylinders, it may be necessary to apply and release the piston up to 70 times to expel all the air. Keeping the hoses and fittings used to bleed the master cylinder in place, remove from the vise and install on the vehicle. For master cylinders without a proportioning valve, once it's secure on the vehicle, the barb fittings and tubes can be removed and the brake lines can be attached. If the master cylinder is equipped with a proportioning valve, have the assistant press down on the pedal and open two rear ports, upper and lower, one full turn, then retighten and have the assistant release the pedal and do the same for the front two ports. This step should be repeated at least one more time to ensure the air is removed between the lines and the master cylinder. After the master cylinder has been bench bled and installed on the vehicle, fill it with brake fluid and continue with bleeding the brakes at each wheel to finish the process of bleeding the brake system. If you choose to try any of these methods to bleed your master cylinder and brake system, you can find all the parts, products, and expert advice you need at your local AutoZone. Parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone, and thanks for watching.